Congress and the President have traditionally been accorded near plenary authority in national defense areas. Um, that's, I think, consistent with the uh, heritage of our country uh, up until very recent years, uh, post 9-11 years. And um, I call your attention to a case before the Second Circuit, Doe versus Mukasey, uh, uh, last year, and that's uh, Attorney General Mukasey, former judge from New York, uh, uh, Mukasey, in which a three-judge panel held, uh, that included Judge Sotomayor, ruled in part that certain provisions of the Patriot Act were unconstitutional under the First Amendment. Specifically, the panel found unconstitutional the provisions of the Patriot Act allowing senior government officials to certify that the release of certain documents would endanger national security. The panel stated, quote, the fiat of a government official, though senior in rank and doubtless honorable, cannot displace the judicial obligation to enforce constitutional requirements. So uh, does that give insight into uh, uh, Judge Sotomayor's approach to law? Uh, and uh, the opinion went on to state, under no circumstances should the judiciary become the handmaiden of the executive, close quote. Uh, yes. Uh, I think it's a troubling opinion, uh, Senator Sessions. It may strike some people as a technical case. Uh, the panel was concerned with the fact that the certifications by senior government officials, quite senior about, had to be treated as conclusive, absent a showing of bad faith. And the view was that it unduly displaces judicial power, that it makes judiciary rubber stamp. And I find it surprising in a couple of ways. First of all, I don't see how you can read the language as establishing a rubber stamp in the context of a bad faith inquiry, let's say, by the director of FBI in making the certification as to the disclosure of this information. You can ask the director, how did you make a decision? What facts did you look at? Was that something you did generically? Did you drill down on? Uh, how often have you rejected such requests in the past? So it is a meaningful, it's a differential inquiry, but it's a meaningful inquiry. So I, I don't understand, especially in a facial challenge, why would you dismiss it in a sentence? Point number two, there's nothing unique about treating governments, uh, government certifications by government officials as conclusive. There are numerous other criminal justice contexts, including, uh, for example, um, requests, uh, immunity orders arising in the context of grand jury proceedings. Uh, uh, requests, for example, for pen register information. They've been treated with enormous deference by the court. And what's interesting from my perspective, Senator, is that, <laughs> ironically enough, more deference has been shown over years to these types of certifications in pure criminal justice cases, drug cases, health fraud cases, and national security cases, even both to me, the danger yeah. to public safety is far more palpable in, in, the, in the terrorism. I, I've seen some of that in our committee. Could you briefly give me this answer and see if I'm correct. We've had a lot of people contend that uh, captured enemy combatants um, are entitled to habeas corpus and the, even in our committee uh, senators have contended we've denied habeas corpus. Uh, we've repealed habeas corpus. It's in the Constitution. Why would you deny it to these uh, captives? But isn't it true that when the Constitution was written, made provision for the uh, habeas corpus, that it was never thought and never interpreted as applying to enemy combatants that were captured on the battlefield. And held overseas. That is absolutely right. That was the teaching of Eisentrager. That was something that happened throughout 200 years of American history. And the Supreme Court, in the, in the space of four short years, has changed that view. Uh, it would so when President Bush actually relied on the historic interpretation, he was criticized because the Supreme Court basically changed the law later. Is that correct? That's correct. Then, then, then the Bush administration established its legal architecture under the sessions. Anybody seriously looked at the case law, his positions were entirely reasonable. The Supreme Court that went away from it very briefly, what's even more difficult from my perspective, is that lower courts are now expanding it further. The biggest problem now is forget about Guantanamo. It's extending constitutional habeas to background. Mr. Uh, and reading Miranda warnings. Uh, here, Mr. Halbert, 